also Gina Reinhardt, Hancock Prospecting and Royal, Horst Wiesinger, Horst Wiesinger Consulting, Frederick Demler, International FC Stone, Maureen Copeland Goldstein, Midwest Materials, Andrew Micklemore from MMG, Gary Roberts from Pace Setter, and Oleg Deripaska from Rousseau. Chris, I'll turn it over to you now to reread the read our event. Great, thanks, Adam. Discussing company history, our lifetime achievement winner said, quote, we started small, but we had a vision and stayed the course, despite all the significant roadblocks placed in front of us. This remark captures the essence of the Lifetime Award, which honors leaders who consistently made tough decisions that paid off. Since assuming the helm of an exploration and mining group in 1992, our winner has turned it into one of the top private companies in this country. This honoree has developed three major mining projects, including this year's Rising Star, for which this leader secured $7.2 million in funding. That was the largest loan on record at the time for a mining project. A winner has also led our company to diversify into iron ore, coal, agriculture, and property. Her integrity is apparent in her commitment to Australian charities, supporting economic development, as well as its Olympic teams. We applaud this leader of substance and a pioneering drive. She is a bold and ambitious trailblazer whose contribution to the metal sector is unparalleled. From Australia, Executive Chairman of Hancock Prospecting and Roy Hill, Gina Reinhardt. This one for your own personal achievements, how does it feel? Um, very happy, thank you very much and good evening everyone again. Um, it really is a pleasure and a privilege to be with you all here tonight in London. Well, London is thousands of miles away from where I grew up in the rugged north of West Australia, surrounded by heat, dust, flies, many of them, cattle, and a heck of a lot of iron ore. Yeah. <laughs> These have contributed to the rather unique Australian life that I've had. A wonderful life with my very special parents, Hope and Lang Hancock. <laughs> Thank you. And importantly, have contributed to our country and its standard of living. I'd sincerely like to thank Platts for this prestigious Lifetime Award, which will have a place of honour in my heart and back in West Australia. Thank you. Natural curiosity, you mentioned your parents, and of course there were huge royalties earned on iron ore tenements. You didn't have to go into mining and get your hands dirty, but it was an ambition of yours to own a mine and operate one. Was it the right decision? You know, I do think development in our north is important for our country. Um, you probably all know that Australia has record debt, and to do things like keep up our you know, living standards, we need things like this. And I really want to mention, because I was very naughty and left it out before, but, you know, we couldn't have done this without our banks. We've had 19 major banks support us. Some of them are in the, in the room tonight, including at our table. Thank you. And we've also had five ECAs. And really, without, you know, the funds provided, we couldn't have done what we've done. Yeah. Do you want to say something to those bankers about the price action now? Because we saw iron ore prices up 80% by the end of last year, and I think a lot of the iron ore bosses are saying, is it really possible we can keep on going higher from this point? We've had a little bit of a setback. Do you think there's any chance that the price will be supported into year end, or is it going to be a little bit difficult from here? I don't like to comment on the price, but obviously while we've got banks to pay back, we'd rather like the prices to be high <laughs> and healthy. We've actually heard good news about lump. We've got a lot of lump in our project, our percentage, and so we hope the good news is correct. <laughs> Congratulations again on such a big achievement award tonight. Well done.